getting around and seeing it. Excellent. So my name's David Langrish. I'm one of the heads of marketing at uh, Eye to Eye, and BVE falls into one of my portfolios. And I just wanted to start this session off again about giving some top tips in and around exhibiting. I think the point of today is really about us, you guys, really understanding and giving you guys the advice to really help you maximise your investment and your time at BVE to make it as successful as possible. Um, so I'm going to run through some top tips in terms of exhibiting. Do we have any first time exhibitors to BVE or <coughs> exhibitions in general here today? One person, brilliant. So this might all be new to you. To, to the rest of you, this may be um, kind of preaching to the converted, uh, but I, I think these are they may seem obvious and simple, but actually they're worth reiterating. And it's usually the ob obvious and simple things that you would be amazed that people don't think about and don't actually, don't actually do. So, I, so I'm gonna run through these now. So top tips, so first one is set measurable objectives. So who here has already thought about what they're gonna be doing at BV London and has a clear view in their mind what they actually want to achieve come the end of the third day at the show. Show of hands. Fantastic, so you guys are already thinking about it. But it's really, really important to, to actually think about this and actually sit down, think about what you actually want to achieve. Is it leads that you need to generate? Is it a brand awareness exercise? Uh, is it a specific product launches that you want to get out into the UK market? Really need to think about this, sit down, write them down because what's really important is that once the show's finished, you come back and have a reference point that you can actually see and measure your success of the event too. And, and the, the play, uh, Ben from Playbox had a great example of, of this, how these, the next tip is actually interlinked, is actually thinking about your stand design and how that links into actually what your objectives are. Quite often, um, sometimes the stand is not an afterthought, but um, doesn't really do what you're looking at, what you're looking to achieve out of the show. So you can see some fantastic looking stands, but for example, they can be quite closed and not inviting. And you speak to the exhibitor and they, they, they're wondering why they're not getting the flow of people onto the stand that they want to. And that's because their stand is closed. So really think about things. So if you do want to have, uh, you know, if, you're, if your objective is to create and, and get a number of leads throughout that show, make sure that your stand's set, set up to do that. So make sure that you link the two together. Training your staff. Ben's uh, case study that he did from Playbox again was fantastic and he actually referenced this. He actually talked about how they specifically had people that pe staff that actually go and do all their exhibitions around the world. Now, obviously, that's you know maybe quite a unique position, and not everybody has that. But understand that it's really important that not only do you know your objectives, but the people that are working for you on your stand know as well. They know what they're supposed to be doing and what they're they're there to achieve, both individually and as a company. Um, and particularly, sometimes, if you've got hired staff, so if you've got hostesses that are coming to work on the stand, really make sure that, again, they know what those objectives are, how they're supposed to behave. They're representing your company and your investment that you've made into this show. So it's really, really vital that you actually have a training session before you actually step foot into, into Excel next year in February, that, you, that every single one of your staff members that's going to be working on that stand knows what your company goal is, and what you want to achieve by the end of the show. So Amanda's touched on this already. So promoting your presence. We've talked about a raft of things that we can do. Um, a lot of three, free opportunities that we offer to you. Um, and as Amanda said, don't just be limited to, to the examples that we've put up there. If you've got a, a product launch or you've got a specific campaign or specific audience that you want to go out and reach, prior to the event, then more than then please, please give us a call because we're more than happy to help you in promoting yourself. But the simple message of this is the more that you put in before, the more you advertise to your customers and your potential customers before the event that you're going to be at the show, set up meetings, I promise you, the more that you will get out of that event. 
and the more likely you are to achieve your objectives that obviously you're going to set beforehand. Talk to strangers, sounds a bit of an obvious one, that I've worked in exhibitions for a long, long time, both organising, but actually part of my job is I go to exhibitions to buy, and you'd be amazed at how many stands that I've stood on where people haven't come and spoken to me. I could potentially, to them, be the biggest deal that they've ever had, but they didn't know because they've never come and spoken to me. Engage with everybody. This is your one chance. You've got three, you've got three days to cover and speak to as many people as you, can, you possibly can. So make sure that you really take that opportunity. And don't be closed questions to them. Be open and engaging. Make sure that you ask the right kind of questions, find out about them and what they actually want. Um, it'd be a much more beneficial conversation. Going back to the objectives, record what you're doing. Um, I think Ben, again from Playbox, referenced that in year one, he actually wrote it down. Now we've got Jamie for N200 who's going to come and speak to you about the lead retrieval system that they have, which is you know, absolutely fantastic. In my mind, is a must for any exhibitor because it really helps you understand not only how the exhibition is working for you, but actually helps you go on from the exhibition and actually make sales, gain new customers, which actually is the whole reason why we've come there in the first place. But if you're not going to have a lead, lead, lead system, make sure that you do record those leads in some way. It's absolutely important, vital because actually after the show, how are you going to leverage um, all those great customers that you've met? And then a few don'ts at the end, which I don't need to um, kind of read through them all. But again, there's just some really obvious, simple things. But again, you will be amazed at how many people do these kind of things. Remember that your exhibition stand is your shop window to all those new potential customers and current customers, and actually how your brand represents itself within, the, within your marketplace at the show. So, you know, really make that, you know, your key priority that everybody on the stand, the way your stand looks, link into all your objectives, make sure you engage with all your customers, and actually, more, most and most importantly, record it so after the event you can follow, you can follow up and turn those leads into sales. So, just as a point of reference, um, FaceTime, this logo you see at the bottom, is actually the marketing element of um, the AEO, which is the Association of Event Organisers, which is the trade association that represents us as exhibition organisers. They've got some fantastic tips. I mean, these are just a few, but I really recommend that you go onto their website and have spend an hour just reading some of the literature they have, because they have got some really great case studies of um, great examples of how you can go away and really, as I said before, maximize the time and the, the investment that you've made to make BV a fantastic success. So I'll leave you a few do's and don'ts um, that we know that visitors have kind of said in terms of what they particularly hate about um, uh, what they get from exhibitors. Um, so worth making a note, obviously we'll send all these slides around for you afterwards. Um, but now I believe that I'm gonna pass you on to Justin who's going to talk you through um, some social media strategies. So thank you for your time and look forward to seeing you all in London.